So today I'm going to talk to you about how to launch uh, a product. Uh, but I have a picture here. Um, it's a corporate picture, but it's important because uh, we're talking about how to launch a mobile product. So there's a lot of differences in how you launch a mobile product versus how you launch a standard product. So I'm going to outline a really brief methodology that I use personally in three steps and I'm going to apply it to two examples that I was a part of. Uh, one an enterprise software, mobile app software example called Manage Mobility <coughs> and the uh, second is an example of a consumer app that we launched uh, called Recalls Plus. And then uh, I'll have a brief discussion at the end around some similarities and differences between the enterprise space and the consumer space. It sounds like I'd say the majority of folks here are kind of in the consumer sphere, but I think it's really important for you to get an appreciation of enterprise because I think sometimes it's often overlooked and it's, it's also a pretty interesting space to be in related to mobility. So to start with, the three steps that I use to launch. So actually, the reason why I have it in three, uh, an exec once told me that people only remember three things, it's important. It's just a little tidbit. So I thought, okay, well how am I gonna condense how I actually go to market and position a product? So the first step, obviously, is segmenting the market. Second is selecting it, and the third is positioning it. It's really simple. And so I'll outline exactly how we did that with Manage Mobility and uh, Recalls Plus. First, I want to talk a little bit about Manage Mobility so you get an, uh, an appreciation for what the offering is. So in layman's terms, before I start applying my marketing spin to it, because that way you'll see how marketing actually takes a software offering and, and uh, expands upon it. It, was a con it actually started as a consulting project and it was a consulting project for a carrier. It was meant to bridge a gap between an existing product offering we had in the mobile device management space and, uh, and what our carrier needed. As you can see, this is just one of the pictures. In layman's terms, it was a web portal that sat on top of um, our mobile device management software at the time called Afaria. And so it allowed uh, the carrier that we were working with to apply a ton of mobile device management functionality to uh, their customers through this easy to use web portal. So this was some of the features. Uh, there were a lot uh, because we were obviously building on top of a, a best of breed enterprise software platform called Afaria. Lots of features. I'm not going to go into that because we're talking about marketing. So now I'm going to talk about how we actually brought this to market. So the first thing we did was we segmented our market. So who are we going to uh, go after with this product? And so the ways that you can segment your market, um, the first step is you actually have to develop segment profiles. This is a very important step in what we call um, uh, market requirements document. So market requirements document is essentially a document that outlines what product you're going to be selling, who the target customers are, uh, what products are in the competition, and why consumers would want this. So the reason why this is important um, is because uh, you need to understand before you launch your product whether there's an actual market for it. The way that we uh, segmented the market for managed mobility, we actually looked at uh, providers of managed mobility. So who actually provides mobile device management as a service to customers? So we decided uh, on segmenting the market by managed service providers, telecommunication providers, and telecom expense management providers. So managed service providers um, are typically what we call in the enterprise based system integrators. So Accenture is a big example, or Capgemini. Um, telecommunication providers, those are like Verizon, um, or uh, ones carriers that don't actually own the infrastructure, so that's what we call mobile virtual network operators. Um, and then telecom expense management folks actually uh, build out tools to manage telecom expense. We decided to segment based on these um, characteristics and then what we did was we looked at what their needs were. So managed service providers uh, needed a way to basically customize existing software packages to meet their customer needs. Uh, telecommunication providers, they were looking for ways to get more value 
for their consumers or enterprise customers and, and basically build up incremental revenues. And what were telecom expense management folks looking for? Well, they were looking for ways to generate basically return on investment for their customers through cost savings because telecom expense management folks are all about showing how their tools save money for their customers. And the important thing to note with um, these segments are who these partners actually service. So their end customers, um, the managed service providers typically provide services for the enterprise and small to medium size for a certain extent. Telecommunication providers, primarily consumer but sometimes enterprise. And then the TEM uh, providers were uh, also enterprise and SMB. Once we decided how we wanted to segment the market, then we actually had to look at how we were going to select our target market. So what we decided to do was um, uh, the way that you select what segment you're going to go after, you actually have to develop some type of measures for how attractive that segment is. And you also have to, um, so once you've actually decided on the measures, then you select. I should have prefaced this too so you get an appreciation for the the time. Managed Mobility when we launched, that was um, approximately 2010, and a 2010 beginning of 2011. So that was, that's why you're seeing the sources are a bit older. What we decided to do is uh, we looked at who actually uses Managed Mobility um, services today. And what we found were the majority of people that use those are enterprise customers. And they're typically over 500 plus employees, um, they have about over a billion in annual revenues and an example of that is Coca-Cola. After we figured out who actually uses those services, we decided on um, looking at who sells to those customers. And the person that we decided um, that actually provides those services are managed service providers. After we chose our segment, um, the next step is developing the target buyer persona. So the target buyer persona is the person who you're going to position all your messaging to. So that uh, is usually a fictional character, and um, you know, in a tar they're usually in a targeted demographic. They um, they have certain attitudes or behaviors, and it's really important with any of your messaging that you obviously know who you're targeting it to. Our target uh, persona was the VP of Business Enterprise Development Services, and this person. Uh, is the person that is tasked uh, within the managed service business of building new mobile businesses. And what do they care about? Well, they care about uh, taking a new business to their customers fast because obviously they're in charge of building up new businesses for their managed service. And they also care about margins. They obviously want to make a profit on whatever service they bring to their customers. And they care about what we call customer stickiness. And customer stickiness is the ability for that customer to stay with the service you're providing rather than switch over to someone else. So that was uh, very important to this person. And um, because they're the, the, typically the person that is bringing in business into their managed service um, business, they're obviously personally vested in the success of the partnership. We chose the market, we chose who we're targeting all of this to. So that's steps one and two. The third step is obviously we need to position it to this persona. But you have to focus your efforts to gain market traction first. So when you're starting a new offering, um, if you go, if you cast your net out wide, um, you're not going to be able to build a credible story because then it's like, well, who is managed mobility really for? You know, we got this partner here, this partner here. But if you actually target it to one segment, you can really grow that offering and then what um, we call is it, it kind of grows into other off or complementary markets, right? So the 10 market is actually one we went after next. The difference between, I would say, consulting and uh, a product offering is you, you're not going to make money if you're always constantly changing your product to serve uh, a specific customer. You want to be able to serve a, uh, a wide span of customers. So yeah, what we call, uh, there's certain configurations we could do, but as far as um, making drastic changes to the software, no. Once we develop the persona, 
and we're going after the VP of Business Enterprise Development Services, uh, we developed the following value proposition. And again, it's in three. This is what we decided manage mobility. This is why manage mobility would resonate to the VP of Business Enterprise Development Services. Manage mobility was going to create a new long-term predictable and incremental revenue stream for this guy. Incremental is important because it means it's, it's additional to what he already has, right? It's also going to create more value for his customers um, because you're going to be able to offer complementary services to the ones you already have and it's going to encourage even more vendor lock-in because uh, customers are going to see even more value with the services you're providing by providing this service. And it's also going to be able, you're going to be able to differentiate from your competitors because you're going to be using uh, the newest technology for managed uh, mobility services. I should have also prefaced this, managed mobility was launched uh, under the Sybase brand, so um, I know Wayne actually was here uh, talking to you folks a couple weeks ago about kind of the transition that Sybase moved into SAP. So I also wanted to mention that when we launched Managed Mobility, which was three years ago, it was under the Sybase brand, which at that time um, was focused on uh, enterprise mobility and database products. So I kind of want to give you a preface for when you start seeing the collateral examples I'll show later on. So, and then the consumer example I'm going to talk about in the future is actually under the SAP brand.